These are the single-celled ingredients of a sea star, unfertilized eggs on the left and sperm on the right. If you mix these, something amazing happens. Zygotes develop into multicellular animals. Today we'll see that in two triploblasts to see how the three embryonic tissue layers, digestive system, and salomic cavities form. We'll watch this in echinoderms where the process is easy to see because embryos are pretty transparent. Like all echinoderms, both of these species have radial cleavage, are deuterostomes, and form mesoderm and salomes by enterocele. These are the processes we're particularly interested in, fertilization, embryonic cell division, and how the embryos form endoderm, a mouth, and mesoderm and salomic cavities. Embryos are usually quite small and we need to magnify them with a compound microscope to observe them. I'll indicate what magnification objective lens I use with each image, and you can use these scale bars to make measurements of embryos or their parts. I'll drop this image in various places in the movie so you always have easy access to it, but if you want to, you could just trace these onto a piece of paper and use that paper as a ruler throughout the movie. We'll start with a bat star, Pateria miniata. We can't identify the sex of individuals externally, so we isolate them in dishes when inducing spawning so that we can control the timing of fertilization. We induce spawning using a chemical that induces egg maturation in females and spawning in both sexes. There are two gonopores in each ray pit, which is not a technical term, but you know what I mean. You can't see that easily in males, since sperm disperse easily and make the water too cloudy, but you can see it easily in females. You can see two layers of material around these unfertilized egg cells whose cytoplasm is yellowish in color. There's a fibrous layer called the vitellin coat, and outside of that is a layer of transparent gel called the jelly coat. You can see it most clearly on the top right, about two o'clock, where there's a bacterium, a spirochete, stuck on the outside of the jelly coat. On some eggs, like the one on the bottom of the screen here, you can see one or more polar bodies. In sea stars, immature eggs are stored in the ovary at prophase 1 of meiosis, so they're still diploid. Once they're spawned, they resume meiosis, and the polar bodies are the products of those two meiotic divisions. They're also a useful marker of the animal pole of the embryo. You can see the edges of the jelly coats on all of these eggs, especially the three at the right. It's what's keeping them from bumping into each other. For these very three-dimensional embryos, I'll often focus through them, usually starting at the top of the embryo, which is the part closest to the objective lens, regardless of the embryo orientation. 
going through the middle to the bottom part of the embryo and then returning. The top part is always in the best focus.
These early bipinaria larvae are almost ready to feed. I've added some small algal cells to the seawater to be able to detect the onset of feeding, but at 71 and a half hours, none of the larvae are ingesting particles yet. At 78 hours after fertilization, the larvae are still not feeding. Finally, the larvae are feeding. This is an early bipinaria larva, and you can see food, a red cell, and some greenish digested cells in its stomach. It'll spend another month or so in the plankton feeding before it metamorphoses into a juvenile sea star. This individual has five or so algal cells in its esophagus, but none in its stomach. The sand dollar Dentroster eccentricus is next. The embryo of this species develops in basically the same way as that of Pateria, but it is a bit smaller and it has a few more bells and whistles that make it a little bit more difficult to interpret. But now that you've seen these processes and structures in Pateria, I think you'll be able to identify them in sand dollars. But first, let's watch this adult burrow for a little while.
Look at the interesting spine movement patterns on this adult. The mouth is the larger hole in the middle of the oral surface. The anus is the smaller hole on the top of this image. There are four gonopores on the avoral surface. These are where the gametes will be shed to the outside world. These eggs are surrounded by a very thick jelly coat. In that jelly coat are embedded some small reddish cells called pigment cells. You can estimate the thickness of the jelly coat by measuring from the egg to the outermost pigment cells. Eggs of sand dollars have completed meiosis, that is, they are mature before they leave the ovary. So you don't see polar bodies on these eggs or zygotes or early embryos. One of these embryos is missing a jelly coat. Sometimes the jelly coat just slips off of embryos as they develop.
This embryo is in the process of hatching out of the fertilization envelope and jelly coat. Sand dollar larvae and those of other sea urchins make a skeleton of calcium carbonate. You can see this by normal bright field microscopy. In fact, you can see a pair of small triradiate skeletal elements here on the vegetal end of this embryo, one on each side. But small pieces of skeleton are sometimes easier to see by taking advantage of the fact that they are birefringent in cross-polarized light. I want to show you how to generate that kind of lighting on a compound microscope. You just need some polarizing filter material, which you can buy online. I bought some and then cut two pieces. If we look through either one of them alone, they just dim the light. They're filtering out light of the wrong polarization. If you look at them in series and rotate one of them, you can align the planes of polarization so light continues to come through. But if you rotate one of the filters by 90 degrees, then the planes of polarization of the two filters are perpendicular to each other and no light gets through. We need to set up that perpendicular to each other setting on a microscope with one of the filters above the specimen and one below. I've cut one filter so that it fits in a spot above the specimen, so I can just install it there. I can then hold the second filter below the specimen and rotate it until I find that perpendicular to each other position. If there is birefringent material in the specimen, it lights up while everything else goes dark. This is a late stage sand dollar larva. I'll visualize skeleton like this periodically when looking at sand dollar larvae or sea urchin larvae or other things that have calcium carbonate skeletons. At this stage, embryos have two triradiate spicules or skeletal elements, one on the left side, one on the right at the vegetal pole.
This larva, which is called a pluteus larva, is able to feed on suspended particles. I fed it red colored cells of an alga called Rhodomonas, and its stomach is now very faintly stained pink. This pluteus is going to spend another approximately 10 days in the plankton feeding before it metamorphoses into a juvenile sand dollar.